got this short lightning talk. Uh, basically, this is just kind of, it's going to be maybe five to ten minutes talking about one of the libraries put out by Apollo. Uh, it's called Apollo REST Link, and it's a really good library for testing out GraphQL on the front end with REST endpoints. So first thing, I just wanted to get a survey of the audience. Raise your hand if you get to make the decisions at your company. As far as like what technology. Okay, cool. So most of the people here. So that's good. So hopefully this is helpful to you because maybe uh, if you like this, you could tr test it out with your team. So when I was thinking about the intentions behind this and what I wanted you to walk away with by the end of the lightning talk was kind of thinking this: I could use GraphQL without the backend developers knowing. So in the sense of they don't need to stand up a new GraphQL API. You can try it out on the front end and see how it works in the GraphQL client, and then decide if it would work out well with your team. So short agenda, we're going to talk about Apollo Link REST, and then I'm going to show a quick demo. So Apollo Link REST, it essentially allows you to call REST APIs inside your GraphQL queries. Um, so essentially, just using it on the front end with an existing REST API. So basically, all you're doing is linking to the REST API and then setting things up so that you can query it or send mutations to it. So some reasons to use it. Well, one, you can try a GraphQL without implementing a GraphQL server. And Matt was talking about it a little bit earlier. It kind of feels like a lot of work to set up a GraphQL server. So this might be something that you can try on the front end without putting in all the work. So maybe you're working with third-party APIs and you don't have access to the back end. So this is how, let's say you did have a GraphQL server for your personal APIs, but you also have the third-party APIs. You could use graph, a GraphQL client on the front end to be able to work with your GraphQL server and then the third-party APIs, like REST APIs. And then obviously, it's also good if you want to evaluate GraphQL in general. And then last, if you're working with a large code base and you know that in the future you want to migrate to GraphQL, you could slowly do that by starting out using it on the front end with Apollo Link REST. So now I've got this quick demo. So I'm going to, I'll zoom in a little bit so we can get this a little bigger. Okay, cool. So essentially, when you go to Apollo REST link, um, I'll just show you real quick. They have a code sandbox that you can clone and just get things start up, started up really quickly. Uh, and so that's essentially what I did. And then I am using uh, the Chuck Norris API, which I'll show you in a second. So essentially, if we just take a look real quick, so if we look at our app.js, OK. Uh, close that for a second. OK, cool. So this is essentially the, the main component. This is a React app. Um, and so we've, we've got a few dependencies that we're importing from Apollo. So we're using Apollo's client. Uh, we're using something called in-memory cache so that we can store data in the cache. And then we're using the Apollo provider from React Apollo and then REST link. So first thing we do is we initialize a new REST link. Um, and so that's where you put in the root URL to your API that you're working with. So in this case, the Chuck Norris API it just gives you Chuck Norris jokes. Then you initialize the Apollo client. And so that takes in an object with two keys, link, so our REST link, which we just created and then cache, so we're creating a new cache in memory. So pretty straightforward so far. Then we've got our, our root component for our React app. And then similar if you've ever used Redux, so you're wrapping it in a provider. So in this case, we're wrapping it in the Apollo provider. The Apollo provider has a prop called clients where we pass the clients to essentially initialize it, and then we wrap our app around that and then export that. So pretty straightforward, very similar to Redux if you've used that. So now let's take a look at our get joke. Okay, so this is kind of the meat of it. So this is a React component. 
we're importing a dependency called GraphQL from React Apollo, and then we're also importing GQL, um, which is from GraphQL tag. So if we take a look, we can see how they're used. So right here, we're writing our query. So essentially, uh, this was just a get endpoint, and so I'm writing this query. You can call it whatever you want. Since it returns a random joke, I'm calling it random joke, but that's the name of the query. Um, and then when it returns the data, you can give a name to it, so data that comes back is a joke. So here I'm calling it joke. And then you type at rest, and then inside of that you pass the type, so in this case it's a joke. You can call it whatever you want, um, but since it's a joke, you call it a joke and then the path. So, right, so we had the root URL, so it was like api.chucknoise.io, and then forward slash jokes slash random. So that's the endpoint. And then um, after that, you basically declare what you want to get back. So that endpoint, the payload that it returns, there's an ID property and a value property. There's more properties, but I don't need them, so I'm just telling uh, this query, these are the, the pieces of data that I want. So could you, so, so you, right, you looked at the paths that are currently like in the API. Mm -hmm. So could you, can you pass in variables for that path? So could you like write one query and then just pass in a variable? That's a good question. I haven't tried it. Okay, I mean, probably. Yeah, probably I would right. I would think that you could, yeah. Um, that would be something to try, but yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. We could try it in a second if we wanted. So, okay, so we've got our component joke results. Um, so I'm gonna scroll down real quick, just so you can see. So similar to um, Redux, uh, essentially, so I've got this, this variable I'm calling get jokes results query, and so I'm calling GraphQL, and then in the first argument, I'm passing the query, and the second argument, I'm passing the component that will essentially be wrapped or have access to that query and the data it returns. So now if we go back up, right, so here's that component. It's called joke results. And so essentially, Apollo is going to uh, pass that data to this component via props. So it's gonna come in in a data prop, and then I'm destructuring it, and so it comes with a loading prop, or a loading value, an error value, a joke, and then I'm also using refetch to call the API again or run the query again, like refetch the data. Refetch part of the Apollo response? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so essentially, if loading, I return loading. If error, give me the error message. Otherwise, I created another component called joke, um, which takes the joke ID, the value, and just renders it. And then underneath that, I have a button that's called get another joke. And if I click that, it'll refetch the data using that query. So that's essentially that. Um, right here I have this get joke, which is what we saw right here. And so get joke is just another component. It's got a little bit of state. Um, so if get joke is true, then give me the get joke results query, which we were just looking at. Um, otherwise, show me this other button, which is the get joke. So essentially, I'm just flipping back and forth between the two. So if we take a look and refresh that. Okay, cool. So there it is, right? So I'm going to hit get joke. You should see loading for a brief second, and then the, the response come in. So loading, boom, there it is. So if I click get another joke, it should take a second, and then another joke comes back. So that's a very simple example, but I just wanted to give you an overview of what you could do with Apollo REST Link. There's obviously a lot more capabilities, um, but this is just the, the basics, the essentials of it. So that's it. Um, if you want to look at the slide deck, it's at desert graphql Apollo link. We'll post the links to both presentations. And then if you want to read more about Apollo Link REST, uh, Apollo has some great docs, which talks about way more things that you can do in structuring code and best practices. So, so is it all dynamic? Is there a GraphQL schema that's defined at any point? 
Um, I don't believe there is. You just throw in, like, you put ID and something else. Yeah. You just, like, put in the right ones and it works, put in the wrong ones. Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, the, yeah, the, the, the GQL um, service is a lot, allows you to, it's just writing a query on the fly. And for this one, I believe, since we're consuming an already rest endpoint, mm -hmm. um, you define the values based on like what was available. Right. I'm used to getting type error information when I specify something wrong, but that's probably right. server side. Right, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, so. Yeah, you have to define the schema. Yeah, so that's, that's that.